10 years ago when EVs were just starting to be a discussion as kind of the wave after hybrid vehicles, there were all of these naysayers saying, well, we don't have enough battery materials. They'll never get cheap enough. This you know, one negative thing after another. And they've all been proven false. Um, we're already seeing a, prolifer a proliferation into very interesting new battery chemistries and materials that mean that the potential shortage of lithium is nowhere near as critical as people thought a few years ago. The price of electric vehicles have just plummeted with their deployment and they're still only common in a few parts of the world. California, Norway, a few places we see really large penetration of electric vehicles, but it's really a revolution still waiting to happen. And the places that have recognized the full range of benefits are starting to see all kinds of exciting things coming out of it. So California, which has had a mandate to have a million solar rooftops by 2020, and when that was passed, um, there was lots of scoffing. We'll never get solar cheap enough. Well, now solar is cheap enough, and California has about 600,000 solar rooftops. We're well on our way to meeting the million solar rooftop goal by 2020. And then uh, California passed a million electric vehicle target, which got even more scoffs. Oh, vehicles are too expensive. We're not all going to be buying the most exciting Pritzker or Tesla um, expensive Roadster. But we're now seeing those companies like Tesla making their Model 3 a mid-price mid $35,000 per vehicle sedan. BYD, the Tesla, the Nissan Leaf, lots of other vehicles are filling in different parts of the market. And while California is about 300,000 electric vehicles, that's actually a lot further than people thought at this time. And what we're now looking for are what are the ways to really accelerate this forward because the benefits of electric mobility are very high. They not only give us a means to reduce the air pollution in our cities by going to no tailpipe emissions, even if electricity comes from a grid and some of that certainly comes with emissions. But now we're seeing opportunities to use vehicles as a means of distributed storage and incredibly important new results coming out of a number of national laboratories and research units around the world are finding that a very inexpensive way to meet goals for the amount of storage available to the grid, such as California, that has about a 2% mandate. 2% of peak demand, or 1.26 gigawatts in our case, of peak storage capacity, so gigawatt hours is the real unit, but in terms of the peak amount of storage, can be met by smartly networking those electric vehicles. So now the electric vehicle becomes a driver for more clean electricity. Clean electricity drives up the equivalent mileage for the vehicle because the same electric vehicle driven in a coal intensive place might only be the equivalent of 40 or 50 miles to the gallon. But that same electric vehicle in Norway or California is well over 100 miles a gallon based on how clean the fuel is going in. That now we're seeing these benefits that are synergistic and that there's a feedback and one benefit begets another and begets another. And of course, now that we're also looking at increased amount of driverless autonomous vehicles, many of which are now forecast to be electric, we see greater mobility and services for those who can't drive, are impaired either physically or they don't drive well at night, such as my elderly parents. There's lots of opportunities where this clean, smart vehicle is an incredibly important wedge into lifestyle issues well beyond just clean electricity. And so it's a really exciting area and the places that choose to be leaders in it are moving ahead very rapidly in terms of what are the wider set of benefits for clean electrified transportation.